Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for coming today. Um, I'm glad you made it out of bed um, and made it out of your PJs. Um, although we already talked about maybe we should have um, Christmas Day a PJ worship service, right? <laughs> Come in your pajamas, um, bring your stockings and your hot chocolate um, or something. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that we can celebrate um, on this Christmas morning together. It is a... I like, I like Christmas mornings. As I, as I like the late services Christmas Eve, things get quieter. Yesterday church was packed and lots of people, lots of talking and, 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 and action and celebrating. Um, so for me, things now ease off a little bit. And we really can look into the mystery of Christmas, that God comes to be one of us. What an amazing mystery. I, I, I cannot say it in any other way. It is a mystery, and we want to explore this mystery together today. Um, a few things to keep you um, on your toes. Um, I, I don't know how that happened, but there is um, a hymn um, that's supposed to be the closing hymn, our sending hymn, um, after the offering prayer. We're going to sing this after the blessing. Um, Go tell it on the mountain will be after the blessing. Don't start singing. Um, just in the middle of um, when no one else is singing. I'd um, just like to invite you also for um, the worship service in two weeks. Um, and why I do this is um, because you have to sign up for it. Um, or it would be great if you can come without signing up, but um, it's going to be worship um, and brunch um, in the fellowship hall and um, the fellowship center. And we will, um, so it's good to know how many people will be there for this uh, worship service will be more casual um, and will be more conversational around the tables. Um, the movie Black Church will be um, aired, um, shown, it will be the fourth part of it um, in January, date? 29th. No, 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 that's our concert. 14th. 14th. Um, and you can get um, tickets from Jim um, outside. And we are going to be on vacation, meeting our family up in Canada um, um, tomorrow. So I'll be back, I will be back January 6th. Now I invite you to start our worship service with the call to worship. And if you're able to, please stand. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. And hope to every deserving heart. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to every conflicted soul. Glory to God in the highest. And joy to every downcast spirit. Glory to God in the highest. And love to everyone. Let us sing praises to our God. Let the light of Christmas shine in the darkness.
and also with you. Let us pray. God, Heavenly Father, we come this Christmas morning with hearts that are full of joy on one hand, but on the other hand with hearts that are full of longing to receive you into our lives, just as you were born in a manger back in the days in Bethlehem. So come, Lord Jesus, we invite you. Come, be born in us today and every day. Grow within us that we may receive all the grace and all the love that you have to offer us. And let this love and this grace be spread in this world to all people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A reading from Titus chapter 3. God saves us not because of what we do. Rather, God is a God of mercy and salvation who graciously cleanses us in baptism and renews our lives through the Holy Spirit. When the goodness and the loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to John in the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, with, was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being, in him was life, and the life was the light of the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory the glory is of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Do you understand Christmas? I mean, I'm not talking about the Christmas tree and the stars and decorations and the good food and presents and all these things. But now, do you understand Christmas? <coughs> the Christmas as in God born in a child. The Christmas as in the God who started creating the universe with the Big Bang over 15 billion years ago, becoming as small as one cell in the womb of Mary. Honestly, I'm, I'm trying to make sense of it every year. And every year when Christmas comes around, and I kind of figured the year before that I finally made some sense of it, uh, yeah, pa yeah, a year passes by and here I am again, and wondering what does it all mean. I guess this is why Luke and Matthew decided to tell the story instead of like, trying to explain the mystery. They just told the story and allowed us and, or led us to worship that mystery, marvel at the mystery and to praise God who's behind it. But John decided to go a different way. And there's one thing this year, and so much of that short text, I'm intrigued about and it's that he talks about Jesus as the Word of God. The same Jesus Mary put in the manger is the living Word of God. You see, it's like someone had asked God, God, tell us about yourself. Or, hey God, who are you? What's on your mind? And what kind of God are you anyhow? Well, I, th I think that's a question people ask before Jesus, right? And, and God tried to answer that question, sending messengers, prophets, other people, right? Talking about God and sending letters, um, writing things down, which have been misunderstood and misinterpreted before. So instead of continuing doing this, I guess God said, you know what, I'm going to send my word directly to the people. And you see, when it says in the Bible, the word of God, it means usually God. Right? How, can, how can we differentiate us from the words we are saying, right? If I'm saying something, I might regret it afterwards, but it's still coming out of me. So the word is representing the person. So Jesus 
Jesus is God's self-expression. Through Jesus, God himself is speaking. In Jesus, God reveals himself to us and we get to know what is truly on God's heart and in God's mind. In Jesus, God lets us know what's important to him. It's like, again, God wanted to straighten out all these misconceptions about God once and for all by putting it right in front of our eyes who and how God truly is. Well, I'm not sure if it worked all that well because we are so stuck in our conceptions about God and how God should be and how we want God to be that we still didn't quite understand what God wanted to tell us by becoming one of us. But honestly, if you want to know what God is up to, we only need to look to Jesus. If we want to know how God wants us to live and conduct ourselves, we only need to look to Jesus. Now what kind of God did reveal himself in this Jesus whose story began in a manger in Bethlehem? who was welcomed by strangers from afar and by shepherds from the area, who was brought to safety as a refugee in Egypt, in a foreign land, and who grew up in a remote region of the Roman Empire. First of all, in Jesus we see a God who did not come with power and force. You remember that story um, when God revealed himself um, at, uh, to the people of Israel for the first time and they were so afraid. Because there was thunder and lightning and Moses shining like crazy and they were just scared to death. That's when God came with power, showing forth his glory. Still veiled, but not as well. By becoming a child. What, what is to fear about a child? A baby. That's like even, even the worst people get feelings, right? Um, the hardest, hardest, hardest hearts get soft when they hold a baby. So what is there to fear when God comes to us as a vulnerable child? So we don't have to be afraid of him. And we may be able to trust the love that is revealed in this child. You see, Jesus, if Jesus is the, the ultimate and final self-expression of God, then it is from and through Jesus that we need to understand all these other words about God. Even the words written in the Bible, it's, we need to read them always from this perspective that Jesus is the Word of God, where God revealed himself the clearest to all of us. To all words and actions that don't live up to Jesus, words that discourage, words that judge, words that instill fear, words that put down and don't lift up. Words that bring death and not life. We can now say that all these words are not from God. And if we hear them said by people who claim to talk about God, we can point to Jesus and say, no, that's not the God Jesus revealed to us. Because in Jesus we see God's goodness and loving kindness revealed. For example, when they brought this adulterous woman to Jesus, instead of punishing her according to the law, he forgave. When he healed many who were written off by society, when he saw the person behind their deeds, when he opened the door 
for real change in the people by accept, accepting them and treating them as God's children. In Jesus we see the light of God's love and compassion shining brightly. We see how, God, how Jesus showed compassion for people who were suffering. We see it in the way how he did not pay back those who tortured and killed him. We see it when he accepted his death and died our death with us and for us, so that we may know that God and life is with us, even in death. <coughs> Jesus is not only a teacher of God's truth. Jesus is the embodiment of who God is. In Jesus we see the very heart of God, full of love for all people, and a heart that would go any length to reach us, to love us, even when we reject his love. And if Jesus is indeed God's last and ultimate word, then we can know beyond any doubt that God's love and compassion for us are also God's final word.
the need of forgiveness for my selfishness and greed, the need of new life for empty souls, the need of love for hearts grown cold. I believe in God who gives us the best of Himself. I believe in Jesus, the Son of God, born in Bethlehem this day, for me and for the world. Amen. Please be seated. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. The church in every land makes a joyful noise to herald your coming, O God. We give thanks for poets, musicians, and hymn writers who give voice to our praise and for all who lead the church worship, God in grace, hear our prayer. prayer. This day dawns with a new hope for all living things, and from ocean depths to mountain peaks, the earth rejoices. Inspire in us an urgent zeal to protect the planet and renew its resources, God of grace, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Bring heavenly peace to this world and an end to armed conflict. Raise up leaders in every nation who will home, home honor human rights and establish equal justice for all people. Give courage to all who speak out against oppression and advocate for the powerless God of grace. Hear our prayer. Guard the lives of any in danger especially those who work to protect others. <coughs> Lead any who are in desperate circumstances to sanctuary, help, and safety. Grant rest to the weary and soothe those who are troubled or ill, especially Dan, Liz, Chris, Betty, Daryl, Anne, and Connie. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Bless all who gather to worship on this holy day. Be present at our tables and celebrations. And watch over those who travel. Sustain charities, outreach ministries, and food pantries that give generously to people in need, especially IFM and Hospitality House. God of grace, hear our prayer. In Christ we have beheld your glory, full of grace and truth. We give thanks for those in every generation who reflect the light of Christ. May their witness shine forth in our time. God of grace, hear our prayer. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. Amen. 